Hey, this is René and in this video we want to talk about pivot points and we want to check if we are able to um, draw lines at the uh, specific levels in a chart that we can then use of course for further trading or um, yeah, for, for analysis purposes or whatever. So this is the MetaTrader 5 and we will jump right into the um, MetaQuotes language editor. You can find it if you click on IDE in the upper left corner. Then to write a expert advisor or indicator wouldn't really matter here for this program because we're just drawing lines. Um, you can click on new in the upper, upper left corner, click on next and then give it a name. Um, pivot points uh, system or whatever you want to call it. And then you click on next, next and finish. And this is the raw skeleton as always for a expert advisor. Let me just remove these gray lines because they are comments and they do not affect the program. And now we can just get straight to the point. So we want to fill our code into the on tick function, I think. Because once per day or at the beginning of a new day, we want to um, execute a piece of code that then draws the um, pivot points or pivot lines into the chart. So when we calculate the pivot points, we need um, information from the previous daily bar. So if we go into the uh, daily chart for the pivot point, we need the high price, the low price and the close price because we will add them um, uh, yeah, we will add them up and um, then divide the sum by three. So what we can do to achieve this is first of all, we calculate these prices. So we can say, for example, the high price will be stored in a variable called high one. And to receive the high price of this previous candle daily bar, we can use the I high function. You can read everything about this in the MQL5 reference. You can open it by clicking on uh, help MQL5 reference. And then if you click on index, you can search for function names like I high. And this returns, and this function returns the price of a specific bar. And this bar is defined using the three function parameters. The first one is the symbol. And since we activate this expert advisor on a chart, this underscore symbol variable will always um, hold the current chart symbol. So for example, for um, US dollar Japanese yen or US 30 in this case, it would hold the value US 30 if we attach it to a US 30 chart. And yeah, as, again, this will always return or hold the uh, current chart. So you can always use underscore symbol if you want to, um, if you're referring to the current chart where the expert advisor or program is attached to. Then the second parameter is the time frame, as you can see here. So we can provide any of the identifiers of this enum time frames uh, enumeration. You can see all the IDs here. I like to choose the IDs, um, yeah, like we, uh, like I did here. You could also um, provide the amount, the amount of uh, minutes. So, for example, I could say five for a five-minute uh, time frame. But yeah, I like to do it like this, like period M5 or period D1, which is halt, uh, which is one of the identifiers here. This is easier to read, I think. And then we have the shift value. So now we already defined that you that we want to have a um, a um, and let me let me comment this um, that we want to have a high price in the current chart in the D1 or from the D1 time frame. And um, I want to demonstrate this. So. If you want to activate your program that you just wrote on the chart, you have to click on compile first because this will create the executable. And then in the MetaTrader, you will see um, on the left side in the navigator, and if you do not see it, click Control N to open or close it. And there you will now see the pivot point system. And I can double click it and attach it to the chart that is currently um, selected, which is this US 30 chart. And you can see the system um, 
the program is now running and it returns a value, which is uh, 34,119. And this is the high price of this um, bar here. So if I, if I just um, open this data window, we will see for the previous bar, this high price is exactly the price written in the upper left corner. And this is because as a last parameter, we chose one here. This means that we want to have the price of the last bar. If we would, um, instead of one, write a zero, for example, this would return the value of the current bar. So the high price of the current bar. And yeah, this is what the shift parameter does. And for the pivot point calculation, we need the previous bar, of course. And then we just take the return value of this iHigh function and store it inside of a double variable. A double variable can be created like this. You um, define the type and then the name of this variable. And this would be a valid definition or declaration of a double variable. So first of all, the type and a double data type is just a any number that has a decimal point pretty much. And since we are calculating the high price, this is typically a number with a decimal point. So we use a double data type for this. And then we have the name of the variable. So we can yeah um, change the value or receive uh, the value stored inside of this variable using this name. And um, yeah, we can um, store a value inside of this variable using this equal sign and then and a line using a semicolon. So this is enough to calculate the high price. And the good thing is we can just copy this um, process pretty much for the low price and even for the close price. So close one, I close and symbol period D1. And the only thing that is really changing is the name of the function. But as you can see here, we have a I high function, we have a I low function, and we even have a, um, yeah, I close and I open, and you have all these functions. They are part of the MQL5 framework, and they are given to us pretty much for free. So I think we do not really need this comment. And now we can already take these three values to calculate the pivot points, which is just the high price plus the low price plus the close price divided by three. And oh yeah, and we can store this in a variable which we can call, for example, pivot points, a uh, pivot point. And yeah, this is it already. So now we calculated this point, um, and now we have to make it visible in the chart. So for this purpose, we can create a object. So first of all, um, any object in the chart. So what, what, let me explain this. What we are trying to achieve is we want to draw a horizontal line like this. And um, you can see that um, any any object like this, if you click on properties, it has a name. It always has a name. And that's pretty much the identifier of the object in this specific chart. So every object in a chart has to have a different name. So I think if I try to, I never tried this, but if I tried to take the name of the first object and give it to the second object. Yeah, this is just rejected. So as you can see, I cannot change it to the name of the first object, but I can change it to any other name. So um, yeah, as you can see, a name always has to be unique for every object because this is the way of the meta trader to uh, separate these objects from each other, each other. So what we can do here is we can create a name. So we can say object name, pivot, Point, for example, um, yeah, just like this, um, or pivot point. Doesn't the name is not really? It, it doesn't matter what the name is, but it has to be unique for this chart. And now we can use this um, name to first of all try to delete a object if we can find one with this name. So we always have to provide a chart ID, which is zero. Uh, zero for the current chart and then a name of the object. So the 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 meta um, the expert advisor will be able to search in the current chart for any object ha uh, that have that has this name and if it finds one it will be deleted. So again you can read about this in the documentation. Object delete is of course 
as any um, of these, I think it is violet or yeah, violet functions is a system function that you can use um, <clears throat> as part of the MQL5 framework and that you do not have to write on your own. And then we can use another of another one of these um, functions, which is the object create function. And it does exactly what the name says, it creates an object. So we can say chart ID is zero again for the current chart. Then we have our object name here again. <clears throat> And then as a first parameter, we have to define what kind of line or what kind of object we want to create. And we want to create a H line, which is a horizontal line. So just use, um, you can pretty much use any of these object type um, identifiers, which are part of the enum object. And yeah, you can read it in the documentation again. And you can use any of these. But in this case, of course, we want to use the horizontal line, which is H line or object uh, underscore H line. Then we have to um, uh, provide a sub window. A sub window is zero in this case because we do not want to create it in some kind of indicator window. And now we have to provide four more values, a first time, a first price, a second time, and a second price. And uh, for this purpose, we can, <clears throat> first of all, um, create two more variables, which is the time one variable. And again, we use the iTime function for this because this is a way to receive the um, open time of the previous daily bar. So this will be um, this timestamp that you can see here now in the, um, in the chart. So this will be uh, the uh, 22nd um, of February 2022 and <clears throat> at zero o'clock. And this is the first time where our line shall uh, start. And we need a second time where it shall end. So we can just take, um, for example, time one, which is the first time, and we add the period seconds of the um, uh, of a whole day pretty much and multiply this with two because this will um, now draw the line at the beginning of the previous day until the end of the current day. So if we now provide these values here, time one, and then as a first price, the pivot point, and then time two, and as a um, second, Oh, I think, um, yeah, we do not even need the second time because a, um, a H line object is always drawn um, like everywhere. There is no starting and ending, but we can um, have a starting and ending point. Oh, wait, let me just um, make it like this first. So if you compile this, you can see there should be, oh yeah, let me delete these lines that I created before, there should be a line somewhere which is this pivot, pivot point line and it is not there. So let me search for it in the object list. Um, there, it is somewhere in the chart, but the, the value is, oh yeah, there it is. Okay. I think I, I thought it was the price, but this is our pivot point line here some, somehow. So if we change, change the chart, yeah, we can now see this is our pivot point line. You can see it, it is this red line. And I think it is a great idea to change maybe the color of this line so it is easier to recognize. So we can say object set integer, and you can see there are a lot of object set functions like object set integer, object set double and object set string. And you can use these functions to change um, some properties of a specific object. So you have to provide the chart, the object name, and then a um, object property identifier like object prop underscore color. And then we can provide pretty much any color. We could say, for example, we want this um, pivot point line to be um, yellow. And you can see in the documentation, again, there are a lot of colors that you can choose from. You could choose yellow, you could choose brown, you could choose gold, you could choose any color pretty much. So if you compile this, this line should now be yellow, which we cannot really see on this chart. So we should maybe take a color that is a little bit better to, to see in a white chart. 
So we can say, for example, uh, medium blue, and this should look really great now. Yeah, and if you want to make it even easier to see, you can just copy this line and uh, change the object property width because this is the size pretty much of this line. We can say three, for example, and you can take everything from one to five to uh, draw this line. So this is a big pivot point line now. And yeah, again, as I, as I said, we can also define a starting and ending time. If we use object trend instead, because this object trend line is a line which can have a starting and a ending point. So if we now provide a starting and ending point, this should um, hopefully work. And yeah, it, sh it, it now only draws the line from the beginning of the previous day um, and uh, till the end of the current day. So um, yeah, this is working pretty fine. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is correct or maybe you can, if you want, you can just choose the start of the, uh, of the current day. Then you can just um, rearrange these values like this. So you receive the, the, the date time. Um, timestamp of the current day using this um, zero shift value and then you can just add uh, the period seconds for one day and then it will only draw um, the line at the beginning of the uh, current day here and yeah this is it pretty much so yeah I don't know it always kind of wants to draw it at the last bar of the previous day. But yeah, this is a problem that we do not uh, want to cover in this um, tutorial. So let's take care of the resistance and support levels because there is not only the pivot point, but there are other levels um, that we can um, draw here. So for example, we can calculate the R1 level, which is also a level that is used in this pivot point uh, trading um, approach. So this is the first resistance level, and this is calculated by using the pivot points, multiplying it with two, and subtracting the low of the previous day from this uh, multiplication. And I'm always looking to the right side because I have the the mathematic, uh, mathematical formula for the calculation on the right uh, desktop uh, or uh, monitor. So uh, do not forget these brackets because otherwise the mathematical calculation... Yeah, no, I think it doesn't really make a difference. So you do not need these brackets. <laughs> okay, so this is the R1 price. And what we can do now to, uh, to draw this price pretty much is we could copy this code here and say we want to have this R1 line. So just change the object name like this and the rest can stay pretty much the same but we just have to uh, change these um, prices to R1. So what we have here now if we compile this again we now have this R1 level up here which is the first resistance level. And yeah this is really cool and we can now do the same thing for the R2 level. We just copy this and we can uh, calculate the R2 level, which is, uh, let me check this, pivot point plus and um, uh, plus high minus low, um, plus high minus low. I think like this, so this is, the R2 level now. So if we compile this, this should draw the R2 level somewhere here. Yeah, this is the R2 level. So this is working. And we could do the same thing for the support levels now, which are the levels um, below the pivot points. But this is already kind of messy because we always copy this code and it makes our program really, really big. So whenever you have the same code that, that you execute multiple times, it is always a good idea to write a separate function for this. For example, we could go down here at the very end of the program outside of the body of the ontic function and we can write a, a, a function for this. For example, we can say create a line like this and this is the function name and then we have several parameters. For example, the first should be the object name. 
The second parameter should be the, um, the first time. The third parameter could be the first price, then date time, time two, and double price two. And we can now copy this block here pretty much inside of this function. And then um, we just have to, whoops, change these values here because now we're choosing the price one and price two which are the values from these parameters and the rest um yeah maybe we can also provide a color as a parameter here <coughs> and then use this color variable to change the color of the object so let me finish this uh real quick and then i will explain the usage of this um um of this function time one r2 time two r2 like this and we do the same here pretty much and you can already see the code is already cleaner and it's easier to read the code here medium blue pivot point and if I compile this the the output should be the same and I even changed the color of these resistance levels so what we did here is we took the code that we use multiple times anyway and put it inside of a function and you can create functions you can create as many functions as you want it is the, the, the formula for this is always the same. You have the return value, which is in this case void, which means that this function does not return anything, uh, but it could also be double, it could also be int, it could also be date time. And these are some of the types that we already used here. So a function can return a value, but it doesn't have to. If it doesn't return a value, you just choose void as a return type pretty much. Then you have the name, for this function and then you have um, parameters which are in uh, these parentheses in these round brackets and then after this you have uh, these curly brackets which are uh, needed or which are used to um, wrap the body of this function and for the parameters you can define any parameter you want um, with any data type pretty much so i could choose um, some integer variables here some double variables doesn't really matter you just always write the type of the variable and then the name of this um, uh, or then um, yeah the type and the name of the variable and you can um, write as many as you want just um, make sure to have this comma to separate them and then whenever this function is called what we did here for example you have to write oh and it is always called from another function typically from some of these event handler functions, which are called by the metatrader itself and then you can for any function call you can write the name of the function and then you have to provide all the parameters and you can see in this list if we open the uh, brackets here you can see the definition of all the parameters that we put here for our create line function and you always have to provide them if it is like this so if i remove one there would be a problem so make sure to always provide all the necessary information for your function so for example if we create uh, if we call this create line function the program the pc would then search for this create line function in your program and uh, if it finds the function it will then execute the body and in this function you have access to all these um variables that are brought to this function uh, by the parameter section here so um yeah this is pretty much just a a good way to use the same code multiple times if it is like really similar and now we can go ahead and calculate the s1 level uh, which is calculated um, using the pivot point multiplying it with two and then um let me let me look at this formula 
Um, yeah, and then subtracting the high price, I think. And then we can update this object name. We can say this time it is S1 and we can use our create line function again using the object name. And yeah, this object name always holds a different value because we always update it before we call, uh, before we use it in the, uh, as a parameter for this create line function. Then we can choose a color, uh, maybe again, light blue. <clears throat> And or we could use light, uh, is there a light red? No, there is no light red. Um, uh, wait, let me search for a good color for this. Color coral would be great, I think. So we have time one again, we have um, S1, we have time two and S1 again as a second price and this should create the first support level and we of course have a second support level. We just exchange some of these uh, variables here and we of course also change the calculation. This time it should be um, minus high minus low like this and then oh yeah that's it so this should be the calculation for this if we compile this there is a problem because we forgot to close these um, uh, quotation marks here and there is uh, some more problem i forgot to use the right variable name and now we should see hopefully that there are some support levels and there are some support levels so you can see this is really really cool and it is working. So um, this is a way of first of all calculating and then in a uh, second step drawing these um, pivot point and support and resistance lines in the chart. So I, I know there is a third resistance uh, line and a third support line. So this would be a good task for you to add this third line to this program and then yeah maybe you can you can just go ahead and use this program modify it for your own needs and maybe you can even open positions or build a trailing stop system on this or do anything with this um yeah basic program that just draws the um pivot points in the chart yeah and this is it pretty much so a easy way to draw pivot points and support and resistance points into the chart. What we especially learned here is um, in this tutorial how we can use uh, functions to make our code cleaner, easier to use and more efficient. So if you like this uh, short tutorial, give this video a thumbs up, please. And maybe uh, re uh, recommend it to your family, friends, um, yeah, your dog, whatever. Anyone who wants to learn more about um, automated trading and programming for the MetaTrader 5. Um, yeah, and if you if you did this, then we will see each other in the next video, I think. Until then, have a great time and good trades. Bye-bye.